Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be fear of missing out FOMO. So I've got an email. This is from a guy. He's 20 years old, and he says, thanks to my work and this awesome book, 3% Man, he was able to get his first girlfriend. So I assume he's been, they've been together for a couple of years now. So I assume they probably met when they were in high school or just graduated high school, probably 17, 18 years old. And things are great. They have a great relationship. The only downside is, is she's the only girl that he's ever been with and the only girlfriend he's ever had. He gets hit on by other women and he kind of feels like the longer they're together that he he's, doesn't, literally doesn't have any experience with any other women. And he kind of feels like, Am, am I just suffering from the fear of missing out? So he brings up some interesting dilemmas, I guess, if you will. So I got a quote that I wrote, and then we'll go through his email because it ties into something I went through with my first wife that I wrote about in 3% Man and would ultimately led me to leave the marriage. And so the quote says, as the saying goes, when it comes to having choices, one is no choice, two is a dilemma, and three is is a choice. Human beings feel better about their choices and options if they actually have choices. In a sales negotiation, if your first offer is accepted, then you know you probably paid too much and often regret it later. When it comes to intimate relationships, finding someone who shares your goals and values is extremely rare. People who are good to you, good for you, and good for your soul are hard to come by. Cherish and value the people who cherish and value you because you won't find that many of them over the course of your life. Yeah, Yesterday I had lunch with one of my dearest friends in the whole world and we've been friends for what, 17, 18 years now. And he's literally the coolest friend that I've made in two decades. And he's an extremely unique guy. I always seek his counsel out. He seeks mine out. I love hanging out with them, love philosophizing about life. And it's like people like that, just they don't, they don't grow in trees and they don't come along very often. And so when you find somebody that you click with, whether it's a great friend or a great woman, it's, you shouldn't be so quick to toss them aside, especially if they've never done anything to give you reason to toss them aside. Unless you should have never gotten into it in the first place. So he says, hi, coach, I truly love your videos, and I am very grateful for what you have taught me. I have read your book, and by learning what it teaches, I got myself my first girlfriend, and we have been together for a couple of years. I'm a young guy, 20 years old, and she is an awesome girl. My core issue is not regarding her or her attraction. Her attraction has always been very high, and I love her as well. What has been bothering me for some time now is that as their relationship progresses, I am feeling less and less freedom since it gets more and more serious. So this is a – every guy feels this in relationship and that's part of the double-edged sword of being a man. You love having a woman in your life and you love being close to her. But as a man, you also want your freedom to be who you are and to explore. And I would say because you're 20 years old that you should just spend some more time doing things with your guy friends and a little less time with her. In other words, you can't stop being the guy that you were – before you met her just because you're in a relationship and she wants your attention all the fucking time as women do when they're in love with you. And so I would I would suggest that maybe part of that feeling of losing your freedom is that you're often doing things with her that you don't really want to do because you're pleasing her or trying to please her. You don't want her to get upset or you don't want to hurt her feelings because she's such a great girlfriend to you. And that's understandable. You don't want to let people down, especially people that really love you. But also self-love means you got to take time to be alone as a man, to spend time in your man cave, to go hang out with the boys and have a few drinks and shoot the shit and talk about life. So you have to take time to do that. You got to have your hobbies and your interests and you got to have your purpose and your mission in life and things you do while you're away from your girlfriend. So when you do get together with her, you're really excited to see her. But if you're around her all the time because she gets upset when you don't spend enough time with her, and then you're doing it to please and placate her, yeah, you're going to definitely feel like, I got to get out of here. This, I'm boxed in. And that's just a natural thing. And oftentimes when I see guys feeling, especially young guys like yourself, it's 
you've probably given up too much of your hobbies and your interests and time with your friends to spend with her. And so you feel like you're kind of losing yourself a little bit in the relationship. And so because two people come together to share their completeness, not to complete one another. And so it's important that you do that. Maybe you go take a, a week and go camping with your with your guys, camping and hunting or something like that, where you got no cell phone service and can't talk to her for a week. And then you can't talk to her. She can't talk to you. There's no messages going back and forth. And then when you get back, you really, really, truly missed her and really want to catch up with her and see her and be with her and hold her and make love to her again. He says, I've never dated nor slept with anyone else. And I believe what I am feeling is a fear of missing out. I am confident and would consider myself good looking, which has led to girls shooting their shot at me several times during the relationship. She has had partners before me and feels ready to have something very serious and wants this to eventually lead to marriage. That's pretty cool. Sounds like you got yourself a good, good woman. The important thing is you is that she satisfies you in every way. In other words, when you especially like when you first started, because the reality is you got six, maybe 12 months of the infatuation period before that wears off and then you're kind of then you're normal every day. There's going to be days you're going to be totally in love with her and think she's the best thing since sliced bread. And there's going to be other days where you just don't want to be around her. You want to go do other things. And that that's normal. There's going to be other, other days where she just gets on your nerves and she's a pain in the ass. And you want to go do your own thing. Or you want to be left alone. Or you need time in your man cave. And it's okay to say that. As men, we need time alone to think about our problems in our man cave. And so if you feel like you need some time by yourself... And she's wanting your attention. You just say, babe, I need about an hour or two or I need a half a day. I just got a lot of things on my mind. And I want to sit and contemplate and in silence, put my smoking jacket on, smoke the pipe, have a, have a beer with the guys, shot of whiskey, throw some darts, whatever it happens to be. Because women talk and solve their problems by talking about them. But us guys are introspective. And if she doesn't understand that, you got to explain that to her. She says, it has nothing to do with you. It's just as a man, we internalize everything. But as women, you guys are very external. And you literally solve your problems by talking about them. And we're just not built that way. So you got to give me the space and the time to do it. And I'll love you even more for that. Because you got to respect that. Men need that. We need time alone in the man cave. Time in our garage. Time in the tool shed or whatever. Time to tinker with the train sets or whatever. I actually brought up the issue to her and she was sad for a week or two but said she understood me and suggested an open relationship. This girl seems to really care about you. She told me the issue for her is not about sex but she does not want to leave me, does not want me to leave her and get emotionally attached with someone else. So yeah, she's afraid of losing her protector, her man, the guy she's considering obviously marriage with. Like for me, as I wrote about in 3% Man, I always felt like something was missing when I was with my wife. She was an awesome, awesome woman. And as obviously I've gotten older, I appreciate what a good wife she really was to me. But at the end of the day, something was missing. It didn't feel right. And my whole problem at that point in my life was I was a pleaser. I was doing what everybody else wanted me to do and not listening to my own inner voice. And eventually I worked up the courage to do what felt right for me it was hard it was you know like leaving a marriage when there's like not really major problems or anything it just doesn't feel right to you it's it sucks it doesn't feel good it's not fun going through a divorce it's not fun dealing with the divorce attorneys it's not fun having to explain why you split up a thousand fucking times to everybody who wants to know what's the matter i thought you guys were so happy why did you stay together why did you leave what's wrong it's like after a while you get sick of explaining that to people but it wasn't pleasant and so I, I experienced a lot of pain going through that. And that's why, it's, for me, the lesson, what, what that was really about, and the great, one of the great gifts that my wife did give to me, was helping me become the man I was supposed to be. Helping me feel comfortable standing up for myself instead of being a pleaser and doing what everybody else around me wanted me to do. It was like literally taking my power back and becoming who I was and no longer just going along with things because everybody else talked me into it and ignoring that little voice on the inside. He says, everything is back to normal now with good fun dates and a high attraction and I am allowed to venture outside but I still get feelings of guilt and have therefore not slept with anyone else. I don't like cheating, which is why I was completely honest with her, but it still feels like cheating. I'm not looking for a new relationship. 
I just get a weird feeling when I'm thinking about never getting to explore anyone else ever. Is breaking up the right way? You got to put your big boy pants on, dude. I, uh, you know, my situation was unique. Now, I don't know what you felt about your girlfriend when you dated. If you went through that infatuation period where you thought she was the hottest woman on the planet and you were like, con- figure you're going to be content forever. I never felt content with my wife. I never felt ready to settle down at the time either. Everybody was like, oh, you just got cold feet, Corey. That's all it is. Just, just, oh, it'll go away. And it didn't go away. But if you were like that for a long time and now you're looking around going, ah, there's, that girl's pretty hot and she likes me. He's like, boy, it'd be nice to hit that. It'd be nice to have a little variety. That's up to you. So he says, what do you think I should do, coach? Or in what way should I think about or look at the issue? Well, I, the one thing you brought up in the beginning, like I said earlier, is you feel like you're losing your freedom and all men feel this in relationship. And so what that means is you got to go and honor that. You got to go spend time with the guys and you got to have hobbies and interests outside of her and do your own thing. You know, absence makes the heart grow fonder and it's okay to spend a few days apart from your girl and do things without her. But if you were never really that into her and you were never in love with her or head over heels in love with her, then I would say, yeah, you definitely need to go explore. But if, you know, you had the infatuation period and the infatuation phase, if you will, and it's just now because you've been together s- several years and you don't have other experience, it's, I mean, you could leave her, you can get involved with another woman and have an open relationship. I mean, it's really cool that she wants, she loves you enough and cares about you enough, even though it hurts her, that she wants you to go and explore that. Because obviously, she would want you to explore that, sow your oats, if you will, and come back to her. And then if you do come back to her, then you're going to stay with her forever and ever. That's the whole idea of marriage, that it's supposed to be till death do us part. And if you don't feel ready to get married, I mean, you're 20 years old, you shouldn't get married. But if you really don't want to be with your girlfriend anymore, if you've fallen out of love with her or she's turned you off, then yeah, it's time to move on. But the the only things I really saw that jumped out at me was that you felt like you're you're losing your freedom. So that tells me you're being a pleaser and you're doing too much with her and not enough things on your own. So I would go and do that. But I mean, you got to listen to what you feel internally. And you know, keep in mind if you start, you do start hooking up and dating other women, it may become too painful for her, and she may break it off and never want to be with you again. And so, it's also possible the downside risk is you lose her forever. And like I said in the quote, people who are good for you, good to you, good for your soul, man, they just hardly ever come along. And being young like you are, and having a girl with this kind of a, a great attitude. I mean, the reality is most really great women that come from a great family and value, loyalty, monogamy, commitment. I mean, most of them are, they're wrapped up by their mid-20s and they're off off the dating market forever unless, you know, there's a death or something or they just make a catastrophic error and marry some guy that's just a dirtbag, which typically doesn't usually happen with women that come from really good, strong families where they learn those good family values and they know what it feels like and they find a dad or they find a a guy that kind of gives off that same vibe that their dad did so i wouldn't be so quick to toss her away but i would spend some more time doing things for yourself doing things with your friends and see you got to see how you feel but i mean the reality is you 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 either want to stay with her or you don't and the only thing i saw was that the freedom is an issue and so you kind of feel like you're being smothered a little bit and so as a man you got to honor that you got to go and feel like you have the freedom to do your your own thing maybe just talking to and flirting with other girls but never going any farther with it is just makes you feel good makes you feel good that you could you have other choices and other options but you also got to look at what you got there's i don't see any drama i mean this girl's like hey yeah go she totally gave you the hall pass to go sleep with other women even though i'm sure it's going to be soul crushing to her she wants you to be happy because obviously she loves you. She loves you enough to tell you to go and do that. And because she knows she may lose you to another woman if you do go and do that. So that's what I would do. Spend some time by yourself and spend some time with your friends and your hobbies and your interests. 
enjoy flirting with other women. And if you meet somebody that you click with on a better level, just remember you got six to 12 months and then the infatuation wears off and then you're going to be basically at the same level of emotions and feelings that you have right now with your current girlfriend. And because the next one will, you'll have those high highs, but then it'll wear off eventually. That's just, that's reality. And that's kind of where you'll always normally be if you choose to stay in that relationship. It's like you get a peak and then it kind of goes down to normal. It's kind of like when you're a kid and you want a certain toy for Christmas. You've been thinking about it for six months or you're saying, you know, you, for your birthday, you want a specific toy. And then your parents get it and it's the greatest thing ever. You're showing everybody in the neighborhood. You're showing all your relatives. And then two weeks later, it's at the bottom of your toy box and you've completely forgotten about it. So if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.